Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to MS Project The Course. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I'm a professor of construction management and I've been putting out videos for about four years now on construction, construction management and related topics. But one of the topics that has caught a lot of people's attention is MS Project. So whether you're in construction or any area, I think uh, what I present to you on MS Project will be helpful. Today we're going to be looking at checklists. Now I put out three videos on checklists uh, for specific things like updating, uh, recovery, and of course setting it up, setting up the project. There's a lot to remember in MS Project and it's very handy to have a checklist that you go through so that you didn't miss stuff. And so what I wanted to do was I just wanted to pull those three checklist together, the baseline checklist, the update checklist, and the recovery checklist. And one of the things that I usually tell people is you want to have it pretty accessible. And so I do that several different ways. One of the ways that I do that is if I have this project schedule, and by the way, I'm going to provide a link so that you could download the whole checklist so that you have it in Microsoft Word, but I'm also going to discuss how you can put it on your phone as well. But assuming we've got our project file that we've been following pretty much since the beginning of these videos in this section, Microsoft Project, the course, um, I've got this uh, indicator column. And, you know, if you don't see it on your screen, whatever screen that you typically use, it's easy to insert. You right click, go insert column, type I for indicators. And then you click on it and that would bring up the indicator column. Microsoft Project has this thing where you can bring up the same column more than once on the screen. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but and you of course you can delete it. It doesn't it just deletes it from view. But you see it here. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this cell here at the very top because this is incorporating the whole project and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to where it says link. I'm going to put a hyperlink to that particular file. So now I'm just going to go through a few uh, steps to find my actual um, file here. So I'm going to go into Dropbox is where I've got everything. And then I'm just going to go into my folders here and I will get MS Project the course up. So you can see I've done quite a few videos in this section. So if you're starting out and you just happen to come across this, you might want to go back and look at my playlist. Um, click subscribe and you can check the playlist and you'll see what comes up. But okay, so I've got MS Project uh, checklist compilation and then I've got this Word file. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say okay. And that puts a hyperlink there. So now if I'm in Microsoft Project and I wanted to bring up my actual checklist, I could just right click here, go to the hyperlink and say open link and it brings up my checklist. And now I have it, right? And so I could easily toggle back and forth. I usually toggle back and forth with the alt tab um, button. So you press alt and you press tab and it usually will let you just switch between screens one to the other. If you've got a bunch of things open, you might have to go back and forth till you get it exactly between them. And I've got my project review checklist. Now I'm not going to go through all of these because I've done that in those other videos and you can click on them in the description below, but it's quite thorough. You don't miss things. As you can see, there's a lot of things to remember just in the setting up of the baseline before you set the baseline where you're telling MS Project to remember everything. And then, you know, there's another checklist. There's another checklist for when you update. And you're updating, there's a whole bunch of things, different things that you've got to concern yourself with. First of all, if you're going to update, make sure you've set the baseline because then you won't have any comparison. And you got to have file naming protocols. All of this I go through in the other links to the videos that I discuss. But you want to make sure that you followed all of these things and it's hard to remember them all, right? It's hard. How can we remember all these things unless you're like a power user of Microsoft Project and then you probably wouldn't be watching this video because you already have it so embedded in your mind. And even then, we miss things. I'm a big proponent in my construction training of having checklists because it just stops you from missing stuff. It reminds you of key points and you can customize this. So once you download, if there's something that uh, I don't need that there, you can delete it. I need this. You can add it in. 
Um, but when you finish something, you just click it, right? And then you know that you have put that in. And that's recovery. How do we get the time back after we've updated it? And that's a separate file looking at how we pull that time back, where there's opportunities to do that, and things we should think about, things we should look at. That's very helpful for us too in remembering all of these points. So that's great if we have those checklists and we have them with a hyperlink in Microsoft Project. The other thing that I often do is I like to have it just on my phone. Um, so you can copy, like if you have Word that you can access on your phone, you can just copy it from Word into, if you use an iPhone, Apple Notes, right? So you can just copy and paste it. And in Apple Notes, if you weren't aware of it, there's this little icon here that looks like basically these little checklist circles with a check mark. And if you want to make something that you can check it, if you've got a line in there, you just click on that. So what I did was I actually just copied and pasted it from my Word file into my iPhone. And then basically I highlighted all the ones that I want to have as checks. And I clicked this and it automatically put in all of the check boxes on my iPhone. Very, very easy, very quick. And once you do that, then you've got it. I have on my iPhone, I wonder how many, I wonder how many I actually got now, but basically I've got a long list uh, of checklists on my iPhone. I think it's 36 now for different things um, that I do. And I always find them extremely helpful. Now, if you're fretting that, oh, I've got a Google Android, um, there's uh, usually a notes app that comes with that. And it's usually Google, I think it's Google Keep. And so basically, again, you can set up your, your notes and your checklist in that. Or there's also a Samsung Notes that comes with it. You might use Evernote or Notion. So they all have apps and, and functions for checklists. But it can be very handy. Sometimes, you know, rather than flipping back and forth uh, between, you know, the screens and the checklist, sometimes it's nice just to have it on your phone. Check, yeah, check, 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 check. And away you go. Um, that I find helpful too. It's not like you've got to, like once you've utilized the checklist, right, and you've checked things off and you've done that check, you don't have to um, keep this or save this with what's been checked necessarily, right? The next time I do an update or a recovery, I just uncheck these and start again. Uh, sometimes if I'm a little bit lazy, I leave them checked and then I'm just working in the opposite, like they're already all checked and I'm just knowing that once I uncheck them, it's the same as I checked them. Uh, so that's usually the process that I follow, but really, you know, it is difficult to remember all of this stuff and checklists really help. Uh, if you're unsure of the research on this and unsure of examples of this, check out Atal Gawande's. A-T-U-L-G-A-W-A-N-D-E, um, Checklist Manifesto. Um, there's videos online and YouTube, but he's written a book on it. And really the difference that made to doctors in surgery, uh, in construction teams, uh, huge. And you can think of Microsoft Project in itself as one giant checklist, right? When we start doing things, what does it do? When we start updating things, it puts checks that things are completed. Right? When something is marked as complete, um, it's going to tell you that you have finished it with a check mark. It's just a big checklist. Everything's a checklist from that point of view. Right? Did we do it? Yes. Did we do it? Yes. Um, are we supposed to? It reminds you of setting everything up in your project. So very project management orientation. I think a lot of people don't see those connections that take place between there. So as I said, in the description... I've got links to my baseline schedule, my update, sorry, my baseline checklist, my update checklist, and my recovery checklist. There's videos on that, and there's a download for you, and then you can do with it what you want. So hopefully this video has been helpful, and you're making the connections between the other videos. And if you're just starting out, go back and start near the beginning and work your way through. And I think it'll be very, very helpful for you in utilizing Microsoft Project as a tool to your advantage. So I'm Tom Stevenson. I have a bad voice today with a cold, but I wanted to do this video. Wishing you a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. And please click subscribe, leave a comment. 
uh, it definitely helps for us to grow the channel and the community together. Bye for now.